As the Spanish invade Nassau, the battle for the island explodes, leading to quick alliances and tragic losses on both sides. We say goodbye to two of our favorites on this week's Black Sails, Season 4, Episode 6, 34. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome to this week's review of Black Sails. So, we are sailing into spoiler territory. You have been warned. Alright, big episode. We know this is the final season. We know we are going to be losing a lot of people. We know this is the big wrap up to the story, so tragedy should be expected. But this week, I think, hit pretty hard for everyone all around. The Spanish have landed, and that has had huge repercussions. And it really kind of begins this week with, obviously, the Spanish coming in, everyone in the fort freaking out, and the response from the island. We have Featherstone the girl grabbing money, grabbing ledgers, jumping on the walrus, and heading out of town. Probably the smartest choice there. We have Max up in the English fort, uh, trying to get the rest of the guys up there, the rest of the uh, embattled English group there, uh, to stand by to make a great reaction. I do love how they figure out pretty quickly uh, what Woods' plan is, that he has brought the, uh, the Spanish with them, and so they should just hang tight. Uh, but they're also very quick to sort of sacrifice and say goodbye to Eleanor, which just really shows their... Uh, <laughs> their heart, which of course Woods pays back to him pretty much immediately when he runs into him later on in the episode. But that leaves Max, of course, to go and try and run out to try and save Eleanor. So we've got your initial reaction to the, the Spanish invasion. And meanwhile, uh, up at the Underhills estate, we have Silver trying to smooth things over. And I love how sort of the first Part of this is everybody at the sort of in Nassau and at the coastline reacting to the Spanish invasion. Whereas inland, we have Silver still trying to make amends, still trying to smooth things over between the pirates and the slaves to try and get those armies together to stand against what they think is going to be an English invasion. All of these plans, of course, for naught. Um, but we did give us actually some really nice moments there. And I think primarily we have sort of a little reconnecting of Silver and Billy. Now, of course, as, as the episode opens up, we have Silver turning Billy over to the slaves and kind of rightfully so. There has to be amends, there has to be a certain payback, but he doesn't want Billy killed. Uh, and I think that that's really important. One, storylines moving forward, but two, as that next scene happens between Billy and Silver, we sort of get to, to see things, how much Silver really likes Billy. He's his friend, but Flint is his friend too. And as much as Flint is a pain in the butt, and as, as much as Silver is really aware, and I, and I think that was really important in that scene also of Silver letting Billy know, look, I know exactly what Flint is. I know what he wants, and I know where he can go. I know his whole story. But as dangerous as he might be, he still has never made me make the choice between you and him. And that's what Billy had to do. Uh, and Billy pushed that fight and he had to pay for it. Um, so I thought that it was nice. It was an appropriate scene for Silver to come up. One, as a leader uh, of men, of the leader that Billy helped sort of create and, and, and forge. Um, but also as a friend to try and do that recheck. Now, Billy kicks him off pretty quickly. Um, and I guess after you've gotten your ass handed to you, after Israel Hands stabs you and is about to kill you, uh, and then you get turned over to these slaves to pretty much have the crap beaten out of you pretty severely there. Understandable, though. Um, Billy not really in so much of a, <laughs> in so much of a forgiving mood. Uh, you made your choice live with it. Um, so it's nice that they can kind of wrap this up and really important to do so because, of course, as the Sp once the Spanish, once they know the Spanish are there, that changes the whole battlefield. And that really kind of simplifies the negotiations between he and Julius also. Now, the Spanish invasion itself, 
I was kind of hoping for a little bit more. A lot of all of this happened in the background, and they've got a big season, they've got a lot of stuff going on, so the expense of doing constant large battles, I'm sure, might be too much for them. Who knows? That may be why they had to cap it off at four seasons anyway, uh, story-wise. Um, but I was hoping to see a little bit more of the huge devastation. We saw, you know, the background as Max is writing out, we saw the cannon starting to be fired. We saw a shot inside of Nassau of, you know, some of the destruction going on there very briefly. And then later on, as Woods arrives, he gets to sort of witness the carnage of these Spanish soldiers leaving in their wake as they do set fire to things, torture, rape, kill. They are unleashed, as the Spanish captain has said, and therefore really can no longer be controlled. So while that idea was, I think, presented very well as sort of the, the, the breadth of the Spanish damage that they are doing, I was just kind of hoping we would catch a little bit more of that kind of visceral in the middle of it uh, that we had, especially with the opening um, scenes uh, this season when we had the ships coming in into, into Nassau and the fire, fire battle and all of that going on right there. That was right in the middle of it, the cannon fire, the explosions all around. I was hoping to see something along those lines and it was really kind of really put out to the background, just kind of a quick overshot of what was happening in Nassau and the rest of it was just, you know, the Spanish soldiers uh, at the farm and, and everywhere else. So that in, in, in some ways was a little disappointing uh, to me. But beyond the fighting, of course, the real movement with any show is the character work and uh, here we had some great moments happening as well. With Max, I thought Max had sort of an interesting arc through this, certainly willing to run out to try and meet up with Eleanor, uh, getting to the beach and having a little meet up with Jack, which I thought was great, and I loved Jack's presentation out as, you know, I'm sorry, I thought I was expecting a, hey, I'm sorry, I know I stabbed you in the back and lied to you and was sacrificing you for my own interests, um, but that's not at all. Max doesn't even bother to say it, doesn't even, doesn't even approach, is just worried about... Eleanor, and I love that little dichotomy in there with, especially considering after she gets on board when she doesn't go see Anne, she is trying to explain herself. She doesn't apologize, but to Anne, she is willing to, to try and explain what had happened. She wasn't even bothering with that with Jack. So Anne much closer to Max, very much like Eleanor is. Um, so we can see that that dichotomy and I just I also love the fact that Jack was still willing to invite her on board with the Spanish coming whatever their differences are you don't want to leave anyone to the Spanish uh, invading Armada army like that so I thought that was kind of nice that he was willing to to offer her uh, to come on board the ship now the only thing that kind of grabbed me on that one was why didn't Max run into Eleanor if Max knew exactly where to go and met up with Jack right there, and she's coming from the fort, they had to go in relatively the same way. They're guaranteed, so there was no real reason for Eleanor to take and Flint to take a circuitous route. Uh, though, obviously, it's a big island. There's, it, could, it could have been missed. Uh, that was just one of my surprising bits, but she was so easily able to get to Jack. But Miss Eleanor... That seemed a little bit, uh, that seemed a little bit weak. Um, but as for the rest of it, we just, Max is in this one, I think, kind of dealing with the repercussions of all of her choices. And Max is always willing to point out to everyone what they have done to cause these situations and how much they have ignored her advice and her recommendations and her knowledge and wisdom, um, which really kind of came to the fore right uh, at the end there with Jack. I mean, there was that nice moment with Featherstone on the deck where she, you know, she kind of falls apart and is, you know, and makes the statement of how could we have sacrificed so much and yet have nothing to show for it? Uh, a kind of, kind of where everybody is almost at the end of this episode. There's that little, the little uptake, but that is really kind of a reverberating statement throughout everybody through this episode. There is so much loss from so many people. There's so much sacrificed and yet by the end of of this episode even really, I mean, this is the downside. This is, this is the low trough here uh, in the season. Um, they don't really have that much to show for it. And anything that they thought that they did have is really kind of gone. 
So her frustration is understandable. Um, but I loved also the fact that even there at the end, Jack was throwing it right back into her face as much as she was saying is, you all did this and you made these bad choices and you could have been differently and now I've got the governor sitting in my seat. And that I was like, wow, wow, wow. Poor Max, the you know, Woods is sitting in your seat. I thought Jack threw it out pretty appropriately back into her faces. This is as a result of your betrayal. This could have all been avoided. Eleanor still would have been alive at this point. Uh, there wouldn't have been these heavy losses. And Woods wouldn't have had, to try, had the chance to go to the Spanish um, if Max hadn't done that betrayal. So I thought that was quite appropriate to throw that back in her face because she, she does have that habit of always saying how stupid everybody else was, when in this case, really a lot of this was, was her fault. Now, of course, the big losses of characters this week was uh, Eleanor and Maddie. Uh, and they, you know, we, we had their, their kind of reconnect, you know, the, the girls were being raised the same way as they had that little sisterly connection. Um, but now things are different. Uh, and even at the very beginning here, when Eleanor first starts talking to Maddie, she's already starting to drive, try and drive that wedge between Flint and her, already pushing and asking questions. Eleanor's already doing her thing, and Maddie is wise enough to kind of push that off. Uh, and I thought that was nice. And that was really kind of their reconnecting was their moment here, which was appropriate as they were, you know, they're, they're going to go out together uh, by the end of the episode. Um, so kind of having those moments to sort of do their reconnect, I thought that was nice. It was pushed a little bit, certainly pushed by Maddie. I thought, uh, um, pushed by Eleanor. I thought Maddie was very much, I, I think her, her comeback to her was appropriate saying, you know, my father never told you that I was alive. He could have, but he didn't trust any of you. And there's pretty good reason. Uh, and this, I mean, this whole situation really is a perfect example of the reasons why Mr. Scott kept that secret uh, to himself. Uh, the, now, the only one little moment that I think that they did have, they did a little connection while they were in the cabin there, uh, when Eleanor sort of puts out the idea of all of the losses and everything, and kind of broaches the idea is, you know, if we could trade it all for love, for being with the person that we love and get rid of all of these other things, would we do that? Wouldn't that be a nice choice? And I think that that was the one kind of moment where the two of them could agree with. The two of them were kind of similar. Because I think Maddie is, is herself, while she is the queen of her people or the princess of her people, uh, really because her mom's still alive, um, she is the future leader. She does have a responsibility to her people, I think she would give up certainly a lot of the ambition uh, that is currently fostering, that's working with Flint uh, in order to have uh, just silver. I think, I think she could at least understand that moment. But it was not uh, uh, to be, for we have a, their tragic loss this episode, which, okay, the wounded Spanish soldier who sort of wakes up, takes out their... They only left one guard left with Maddie. I mean, that kind of surprised me. I guess the other ones were killed, and you only had the three people that ran off against the other soldiers. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll go with that. I thought that was just a little crafted as well. Uh, big fight, very tragic. I wasn't really sure which way it was going to go until, I have to say, at the very end there, where it did look like uh, they were going to die. And that's... That's a horrible, that's, that's a horrible thing. I did not want to say, I thought Eleanor would last a little bit longer. Certainly, I didn't think Maddie would die. Though her death does put that tragic spin on everything else that Silver does. So from a storytelling standpoint, I, I can get why they made that choice. Um, but still, just, just really sad. The girls did put up a fight. I wish Maddie had fought a little bit more. They would have had her fighting a little bit more. Uh, they put all of that impetus on, on Eleanor. But... Hannah New has been with us since the beginning. She is the female lead of the show. So it should kind of be put into her weight there at the very end. And, and she does get that last moment with, Sil with Flint, who I thought kindly lies to her. No, Woods wasn't behind this. It was just the Spanish. So she could go at least with that quiet thought. Um, but Woods, Woods has some serious price that he's going to be paying because... That took all of the sales out of Silver. Once Silver found out, I mean, 
things were looking bad. As Flint shows up, things were looking bad at the fort at Underhill. Possibly they could make a stand. Possibly they could do something. As soon as he found out that Maddie was gone, that was the end of it. Uh, and that pretty much reverberated with Silver throughout in the, in the whole rest of the episode. Is once Maddie is gone, there was no more reason for him to fight. The interest of being the Pirate King is now gone. There's no one to share it with. There is no victory there. But tragic, and we can really see how that hits Silver, uh, especially in at that nice moment there between him and Flint, uh, there towards the end of the episode, where Flint is apologizing, and, and I don't know, he could have stayed there, he could have possibly done more, but he had to chase off the, uh, the Spanish in order to try and keep them from getting reinforcements, which would create more of a danger. So, you know, I think he did do everything he could, and I think he is honest and forthright for, for how sorry that he is. He has suffered big losses. Even Eleanor had a certain connection with him, uh, but he had lost Miranda, he had lost Thomas, as far as he knows, uh, all the way at the beginning of all this, uh, so he understands what Silver is going through. Um, and I thought that was nice that Silver kind of absolved him, understood. It's, it's, it's not Flint's fault. It's not. It's Wood's fault. It's the Spanish's fault. Uh, but things look like it may even get worse for Woods because as, uh, as uh, Silver and Flint show up on the Maroon Island, it appears that word of their revolution has spread. Pirates, slaves, Maroons from across the Caribbean and up and down the coast have now come to join up. The war that Flint has been asking for is now here. The revolution has spread. So now they have the army that they can go back and really take Nassau, whether the Spanish are there or not. With this many men, they could. Of course, the Spanish ain't going to stay that long, so they can even just wait a few minutes, <laughs> wait for the Spanish to leave, and then go right in, and they'll be able to take over everything. And if that's not bad enough, if Max is able to connect up with uh, Eleanor's grandfather and he's not in a happy mood, then we could have other ships coming, not only ships coming down, but also from the whole banking situation that Woods is, uh, has been fighting since the beginning here, could put some pressure on that. And that will absolve his creditors and that will just take the whole floor from underneath Woods' endeavor right here. So the battle is not over. It is just ramping up and now you have... Flint with an army, how much he's going to be able to stay and work with Silver, because Silver, I don't know, how much revenge does he want right now? Probably an awful lot. Do not stand in the way of someone once they lose someone close to them. Uh, so this will become a huge major battle between people who have lost big things. We've got Flint leading the army, but it's going to be end up to Silver and Woods doing the heads to head. They each lost someone important uh, in this episode, and each of them are probably going to be looking for some payback. So, that will wrap things up for us for this week. Oh, man, just, again, big losses. Very tragic uh, to see both Maddie and Eleanor gone. But we've got another four episodes ahead of us to see what the revenge is going to be like and how this is all going to play out. A lot happened this episode. In four more episodes, we're going to have a lot more things that can happen. I can't wait to see how this all lays out. Anyway, so if you did enjoy this review, please hit that like button. Thoughts, ideas, what do you think is going on? Throw those down in the comments section below. I know it was a really big week. Feel free to vent. We can go through this moment together and find our way through, hopefully, a happier ending. Um, you can always catch me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Darren Jakes. Uh, like I said, we've got a few more episodes of this, and then we've got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. coming back in March. And then way down the road, we're going to be seeing... Uh, Game of Thrones, we'll have Mr. Robot coming back. We've got some big things on the horizon. So if you don't want to miss any of that, be sure that you are a subscriber. And if you're not, you can hit my little face right there and you will become one. And I will throw up our latest review right over here. Uh, and you can check that out as well. So I'm going to say goodnight. I am D, and I'm out of here. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.